on film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is I am high. Hi, hi. How high <laughs> are you? A pretty high. Uh, my name is Reverend Steve. I am the Pope in question. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is an actual thing worth a Google. On YouTube, I am Mr. Steve, the weirdest storyteller on YouTube. Really proud of that. And uh, in, on every other day, I'm May Lynn. I am a trans woman. I am more male presenting today because I'm just kind of mentally exhausted. It's the day after Christmas. I peopled a lot yesterday. Oh, that's never good. And, and now I'm just a little bit exhausted. And, and in order to get to the right mind frame for the podcast, I take a nice, long, scalding hot bath before, right before the show. So my hair always looks... Uh, wet in a way that I like to call the Seth Rollins, but uh, okay. or any or any professional wrestler, the Superfly Snuka look. I yeah. think you could also say the Leaping Lanny Poffo, and uh, my wife got me a few uh, packages of uh, THC bath salts to add to the bath, and I used a bit more than I normally do today, and I'm a little bit uh, uh, foozy-woozy, but I, I am going to power through because this is our <coughs> big uh, holiday episode every year, right, right before the end of the year. Right around Christmas time, we cover the same movie, and I did the numbers. One, two, three, four, five. This is our sixth annual discussion of Santa Claus, Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny yes. from 1972, shot on location at now-defunct Florida theme park Pirate World. And I'm very excited. We do this every year, and once again... I have but grown every a... year, every year, it it reveals something new. Yeah, something because... that you haven't seen before. Yes, something something, something fresh that uplifts the spirit. Yeah, because every year I get the old notes from the last uh, holidays, and I just throw them right out the window, and I take a fresh, bold. New look at this movie that I haven't said before and that you haven't heard before. So be sure to not listen to the other five years worth of discussions of this film because this one will be 100% different from that one. It's not like I've kept the old notes from episode 105 for, what, six years now. And I'm just reusing the same notes over and over again. I'd never do that to you people. So this is the monologue, and here is what I wrote for the opening of the monologue. Bunny, do you know what the day after Halloween is? The day after Halloween. Uh, it, is, it is All Saints Day. Yes, uh, Dia de los Muertos, which is uh, the day where we celebrate the dead. Uh, but here's something that only real Latinos know. The day after Christmas is a day called Dia de los Christmas, where you are visited by the ghosts of crappy Christmas presents you've gotten in the past. Oh. <clears throat> so, like, uh, you know, t t tonight, right before you're going to bed, ooh, oh, no, what is that? It's a Floby. Yeah. Oh, God. It, and it, it has a shake weight. You know, that's what I'm thinking. That, like, you're haunted well, by all the Kia pets you let die. That's a, that's a frightening thought, because that, that means that the ball gag my dad gave me when I was five is coming back. 
Yeah, uh, my oh no, it's it's the gift that my dad gave me every year. Uh, on love. Oh no, get away. Also, I have an idea. I I think I might turn it into a kids video later this week. But what I want kids to do all across America, keep writing to Santa. I think it's kind of freaking rude that kids are like, "Hey Santa, it's right before Christmas. Here's the things I freaking want." How about writing him in April and being like, "Hey, I'm doing a care check." Yeah. How are you doing? It's yeah. warming up. Do you hate that? What are your plans for summer? You know, it's it's a bit rude, rude ass. And does just... Santa and does Santa get seasonal depression when it starts warming up? Yeah, maybe he gets some some aerial depression. I mean, you know? I mean, he Who is knows? obviously quite jolly during the winter months. Yeah, this is this has been. Heralded in song, yeah. But come summer, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, come summer, Santa does a little cut, you know, just possibly. Uh, fun fact: Come summer is is the the name for twenty twenty two, just like twenty twenty one was white boy summer. Yeah. So 2022 is going to be a whole lot more exciting. Oh, oh, well, okay. come summer, come summer was a special that you used to be able to order at this massage place downtown. Nice. Yeah, and just be like, hey, Santa, it's September. Uh, do you like pumpkin spice and stuff? What, what are you going to be for Halloween? Do you celebrate Halloween? Or is this like pre-production yeah. you know I, I just think I just think that we should be focusing on Santa throughout the year yeah. you know what did he do in June and I what exactly like to... is Santa's birthday yeah right that's weird does anyone? I see some people in chat. Does anybody know when Santa's birthday is? That's I mean, we pretend question. that Jesus is, is December twenty fifth, even though that yeah, that's not exactly correct. But we know Jesus had a birthday. Yeah, that's a great freaking question. Nobody that's ever a... mentioned Santa's birthday. Yeah. Uh so. So it's Christmas. Christmas just passed. Christmas was yesterday. And let me tell you what. Uh, I got the best Christmas gift. And I think we all got the best Christmas gift. Just the best Christmas gift ever. And uh, so here's basically a summary of the world's greatest Christmas gift. President Biden is doing a speech and it's like, hey, how's it going? I'm, I'm, I'm President Biden. I'm not that old. Everything's fine. Hey, America, what's this behind your ear? A shiny quarter? Go ahead and keep that. Buy yourself a licorice whip, Sonny. <laughs> so he's like, oh, I'm doing a speech, speeching, 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 reading the thing because they don't trust me to say what's actually on my mind. And also, I like to praise uh, former President Trump for Operation Warp Speed, he did, Trump did a great job making sure that we got this vaccine out quickly, and I just want to give him some praise, you know? And, and, and President Biden praised Trump just enough for him to become super pro-vaccine in public. Yeah. And now Trump is like, uh, welcome to my rally. I'm really excited to be here. I'm President Trump. I created the vaccine. I just got the booster. Vaccines are awesome, and people are booing him and stuff like that. And now his most ardent followers are turning on him. Alex Jones called him Joseph Mengele 2.0. Yes. In a, yes. Special, in a special Christmas Day uh, message. And uh, talking head idiot Candace Owens now says... 
that Trump is too old to understand what he's talking about. And so people are... And that just came on during her interview with him. Yeah. Like, like yeah. there was a light switch, and it was like, not too old, just too old. <laughs> yeah, so, so uh, I found this message online, and I wanted to read it. I, I'm not 100% sure. Sh- I think it came from 4chan or a 4chan type place. I'm not sure. It, it was posted on some online forum in a group called Great Awakening, which should tell you a lot about this message. The person who wrote it, his name is JFK Jr. on the cross, which says even more about this nut job. Yes. And he said the following. I have been crying (laughs) already. Uh, Great start. Yes. Great start. I have been crying ever since It's right up there with, like, it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Yeah. yeah, You know, it's just classic, classic opening. Classic. Please continue. Yeah. I have been crying ever since President Trump has been on this pro-vax stance In the last few days, here's why. I have been extremely adamant I won't ever get the Vax. That's my favorite Dr. Seuss book, The Vax. Yeah. I am the Vax, and I speak with a sax. And he starts playing a saxophone. Um, I am a Karen. I'm never relaxed. That's, That's the opening line to Dr. Seuss's The Vax. I have been extremely adamant I won't ever get the vax to the point where my wife left me. Oh, yes. Yeah. My two daughters have completely cut out. My two daughters have completely cut me out of their lives. I lost my job because I wouldn't get the jab. And now I've lost the house. Oh, oh. Like, let me eat your tears and they shall, they shall warm my soul. I have my truck and at least enough money to keep the phone bill paid for a few months. I was okay with it all until this happened. This was all supposed to be for something, right? Now I feel without Trump's support that I have held my ground for so, for, for no reason. Sorry, end of rant. Life is pain. Praise Jesus. Yes. This is so great. And, uh, oh, this is, this is what they call schadenfreude. Yes. I am gaining uh, happiness through the misery of others. And I, 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 I believe that we should be nice to everyone. But the media is always playing both sides. But there is no both sides when one people are like, Hey, maybe we make sure everyone is healthy and make sure maybe we make sure that everyone has food. And the other side is like President Biden is a pedophile that eats babies and Hillary is a lizard person. And we need to get as many guns as we can and start killing people. That's not a side. Yeah. You know, and then the media is like, oh, well, we need to cater to both sides. No. There's one side, and then there's a fucking nut job side. Yeah. And that's it. You know? So, like, I'm happy that there are people who are like, I'm against the vaccine and pro-President Trump. And President Trump's like, I am for the vaccine. And now, oh, now I just want to watch all of these people and see what they do, you know? I imagine this is like a... This is like a seven-year-old boy who has a, 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 an ant farm, and he just shakes it, and then he watches. That's this. And, but yeah. Trump's the one who shook it, and now I'm the one who gets to watch. Well, for the most part, Trump has just been quiet about it. He himself was never anti-vax, because, because like, if you take the vaccine away from him, which he takes way too much fucking credit for. Yes. The bitch got nothing. Yeah. The bitch has absolutely nothing. 
Yeah. So he can't be anti-vax. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. But anyway, that's it for the monologue. Uh, let's... Uh, oh, oh, here, here, here's... No, this isn't it for the monologue. Yesterday on Christmas Eve, it was 78 degrees! <laughs> yes! We went to the park, my son had shorts and flip-flops on. He was wearing his chanclas! Oh, Freaking have you seen that one meme? I'm pretty sure I, I shared it. Because it's horribly funny. Uh, it was some guy, he, he just said, you know, it's funny talking about kids, what the kids want to be when they grow up. It's 70 degrees in December. You're not growing up. <laughs> I, I'm worried about the about it being so warm in December because what that tells me is that January and February are going to be uh, like we all live in Superman's Fortress of Solitude. Yes. So, like, the warmer this is, that means that, like, uh, we're going to... We're going to be singing Walking in a Winter Wonderland on Valentine's Day. Yeah. So all, worried about that. All the snow will come down at once. Yeah, and then, and then you know, in the Midwest used to be the place where, used to be Tornado Alley. And now Tornado Alley is kind of everywhere. But, yeah. but usually when you were in Tornado Alley... You had to worry about the end of March and the beginning of April. Or like uh, March and April, maybe a little bit of May, and then that was it. But now, like, tornado season is like March to question mark. Yeah. And it just gets more and more scary each year, so that's going to be exciting. But yeah, the weather is insane. Thanks, climate change. It was weird to go to the store on Christmas Eve and see... The bell ringers wearing tank tops. Yes. God damn. Fucked up. No one's talking about it. Oh, no. What, this is what we really should be talking about. I didn't realize that there were so many boomers out there who are like, let me tell you what's important to me. I want my grandchildren to be playing with a potato head that I know has a penis. Yes. And on Christmas, I want to make sure that my gingerbread cookie has a cock that goes in my mouth. Yes. Like, fuck off. God damn. Really kind of some weird signals going on there, don't you think? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fucking ridiculous. Anyway, that's it for the monologue. Uh, let's let's move on to some movie reviews. Very excited for these movie reviews. Let's get to that. Cut on the monologue. Uh, buddy. Yes. So I have the AMC A list, and what that is is a subscription service where for nineteen ninety five a month. It's uh, uh, more money in bigger markets, but I live in the middle of nowhere, Oklahoma. For nineteen ninety-five a month, I get up to three free movies a week. And so from December 2019 to March 2020, I saw a whopping 177 different movie showings in a 66-week period of time. Do the math. I, I, I'm interested to... Uh, you know, I've got a four-year-old, and he's, he's doing virtual school at home, and I'm teaching him. And a lot of times I just want to be like, uh, Maxwell's like, I'm having a hard time with this math problem. And I'm like, okay, let me show you how to write it out. Okay, this is how you write it out. Let's get a piece of paper. Let's get a pencil. And we're going to write it out. And we're going to write it out. Fuck it. Use a calculator. <laughs> and, and, and the reason why I say that is because when I was a kid, it's like, no. Get a piece of paper, write it out, I need to see your work. It's not like when you grow up, you're all going to have calculators in your pocket. We all do now, so fucking use a calculator. It doesn't yeah. matter. We all have Google in our pants. It's <laughs> ridiculous. 
So it, it, where did that come from? Oh, yeah, 177 movie showings in a 66-week period of time. Do the math. I don't know. Then the pandemic came around and done messed up my streak. But uh, now movie theaters are back open for now. And so am I. So it's time once again for some up-to-date movie reviews with Steve Stubbs of the Week. Dun, dun, dun. That was nice. Uh, this week's installment of Steve Stubbs I got, represents I got lost my... in thought for a second because I was thinking because you have a specific opening for each mm-hmm. of the bits. Yeah. But what if we shot it more like a TV opening? You know? And, and just... Make it like a little TV opening, and then we would just play it at the opening at the opening of the bit. That's a really good idea. Maybe this. No, week... it's just an idea. Let's not give it really good. It's just an yeah. idea. But there it is. That's why my brain was stuck, as it often gets stuck on just weird ass shit for no fucking reason. Yeah. <coughs> Maybe this week, okay, this is what I'm going to try and do. This week, while I'm going to movies, I'm going to record myself at or around or near the movie theater saying the opening. Yeah. And then I'll edit it together and yeah. see how it looks. And if it looks, if I can make it look decent, I'll shoot it to you, and we can have a nice glossy uh, opening. Yeah. So we'll we'll see. For Steve Stubbs, that might work. That might actually work. A man or woman on the run. <laughs> yeah. So this week's installment of Steve Stubbs represents my like kind of look around, make sure nobody's watching you before you walk into any particular theater. I'm really thinking Quinn Martin. Oh, I'm thinking more of just uh, like a, like a YouTube opener. Hey, I'm Steve. I have the AMC A list. Let me tell you what that is. My life is pretty crazy. That's what I was thinking. My mother met my father, and then they had me. Hi, I'm Steve, and my life is pretty crazy. That's what I was thinking. Um. <laughs> This week's installment of Steve Stubbs represents my 26th week back in movie theaters, and in that time I have seen 47 movie showings. I only saw one this week, but I did see the new Matrix movie at home, and I want to talk about it. I try to avoid movie theaters in and around Christmas because everyone and their freaking grandma goes to the movies on the holidays. Yeah. And it, 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 Amber said, it's like, oh, we were thinking of going to the movie. <coughs> Are movie theaters open on Christmas Eve? And I'm like, honey, they're open on Christmas Eve. They're open on Christmas Day. They're open on New Year's Eve. They're open on New Year's Day. They're open on Thanksgiving. And everyone goes. But you doesn't have to call me Mr. Johnson. Huh. Like, everyone goes to the movies on the holidays. It's ridiculous. And so I tried to avoid movie theaters this week. I only went to go see one movie, but I did see the new Matrix movie, so we're going to talk about that. This week I saw the following movies. Guillermo del Toro's new film Nightmare Alley, and I didn't see this one in theaters, but we're still going to talk about it. The Matrix Red Erections. First, let's discuss the movie that I did not choose as my movie pick of the week, and that's The Matrix Red Erections. I assumed with the title that the movie would be primarily about dog penises. No! There is not a single red erection in the entire film. No. Uh, 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 false advertising? Much? I think so. Yeah. I and think damned so. unfair. Yeah. You know? So, when, when discussing the new Matrix film, I want to talk about video games and Tales from the Crypt presents Bordello of Blood. Oh, 
Okay. There's something. So there's this thing that happens in video games, um, where a character will, one character will say the mission like, "This is what you gotta do. You gotta tail Moretti. Make sure you're not seen. Follow him to the rendezvous point. And while once you see where they're where they're planning, sneak your way in there." Find out what happens and come back to this. Come back to our hideaway and report to me. Got it? And then the character you're playing, it's like, I've got it, but gee, this sounds like a bad video game. And then, yeah. and then you playing the game go, ah ha ha, hearty laugh. And uh, this happens. Uh, they'll put this in a video game so that hopefully they'll be absolved for being a bad video game. Yeah. The first time I saw it was True Crime Streets of L.A. Streets of New York? True Crime Streets of New York. It's like, wow, this all sounds like a level in a bad video game. And then yes. it, it, it does happen more than you would realize. It sometimes happens in movies, too. It was a joke in Top Gun. I understand. I'm not the first musician to fall in love with a girl only to realize that yes. she is a part of the French Resistance who, and then all of that. It all sounds like some bad movie and then they look at the camera. But it, it, the, the main uh, time that I've ever heard that in a film was Tales from the Crypt presents Bordello of Blood with Dennis Miller... Uh, one of the worst Dennis's. Yes. Dennis Leary is is the best. Hell, Dennis Franz. On a scale from Dennis Leary to Dennis Miller. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I just automatically want to say Leary, but no, it's Dennis it's Miller. And the thing is that I remember as a young kid wanting staying up and in order to watch Weekend Update because I thought that Dennis. Miller was like the coolest fucking guy on the planet, and he yeah. was always sticking it to the president and sticking it to Republicans. And then he had a, a, a talk show on HBO uh, and where he would, I'd hate to go on a rant, and he would go on this monologue against like politics and all of that. And, and now he's, that he's older, he's like a far-right Fox News talking head type guy. And it's like, what happened to cool, young, fucking Dennis Miller? Yeah. It's like, he, fuck. He, he's that one sucks. of them who, who got the living shit scared out of him over 9-11. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's fucked up is what it is. So it, went, so in it that, all went out the window so that he can handle his fear. Yeah. I mean, let's it, face facts. Republicans are all fucking fear-based. Everything yes. about them is yes. what they're fucking afraid of. Yeah. You know? Fully oh, agreed. but this is Steve's yeah. movie stubs. Let's save that. We can revisit yeah. that. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, he says that, like, they're going through a warehouse, and it's dark, and they've got flashlights, and it's like, wow, this looks like a scene in a really bad movie. Uh, with that, with all of that in mind, the Matrix Resurrection is the most meta fucking film in the world. It starts off with oh Jesus, wow, uh, loud noise alert. It's the opening scene. It features different actors acting out line for line, shot for shot, scene for scene. The opening of the first Matrix film. Yeah. So it's the first Matrix film again. And then as the actual film opens up, uh, you see Neo, but he's back in the Matrix, and he's Thomas Anderson, and he's a video game designer, and he's world famous for having designed these three popular games called The Matrix, and you see footage from the video games, and it's just the movie. And it and in in the movie in the movie The Matrix Resurrections, 
Thomas Anderson, the creator of the Matrix series, is being pressured to make a new Matrix. And there's all this debate about, oh, maybe we shouldn't make a new Matrix. Uh, sequels are just retreads of the originals, and that's what this is. And there's okay, so many... wait, wait, wait. So he it's, is, he, it's they're the most trying to get him shit. to make a, a new Matrix, not a new Matrix game. They're trying to make a new Matrix like they live in in the previous movies? No, they're trying to get him to make a new Matrix video game. Oh, okay. But while they're talking about this new Matrix video game, they're like, I don't know, sequels are pretty derivative. Nowadays, it's just a bunch of fan service. People want to see the same thing over and over again. Maybe we shouldn't do that. Oh, but maybe we should. Maybe we need to give the fans what they want. And th it's too meta. And it's, it's the exact same thing as Dennis Miller saying, oh, this sounds like a scene from a bad movie in Tales from the Crypt presents Bordello of Blood. I think I might be the only critic who will tie the new Matrix film to Tales from the Crypt presents Bordello of Blood. But it feels like the Matrix is going fucking hardcore on meta in order to become critic proof to critics saying this is uh, uh, just a rehash of the original. You know? Okay. It's like if The Force Awakens in that movie. Luke Skywalker becomes so famous that they make a movie called Star Wars. Yeah. And in The Force Awakens, they're like, huh, maybe we should make another Star Wars film here in space. I don't know. A lot of people nowadays just want to see the same shit. And, and I just feel that this Matrix movie is... Uh, nowadays, sequels are just fan service. And I'd hate to go back to the Ghostbusters, yeah. but, like, uh, uh, Paul Feig was like, hey, we're making a Ghostbusters film, but we're not just going to give the fans what they want. We're going to do something fresh and new and original. And audiences, cough, cough, uh, uh, toxic white males, cough, cough, all the fanboys said, we don't want anything new. We just want the same old shit. <laughs> and so Dan Aykroyd... And uh, what's his nuts? Uh, <coughs> the guy who directed the first one's like, don't worry, fans, we'll give you what you want. The same old shit. Yeah. And that's just the standard for reboots now. It's, it's just fan service the movie. Bill and Ted, fan service the movie. The Force Awakens, fan yeah. service the movie. Ghostbusters, fan service the movie. Matrix Resurrections, fan service the movie. And so and, that's and, and especially with Bill and Ted, man, I really, really, I, I thought with as huge of a gap in time we have, that gives you the opportunity to do something completely unique with yeah. the idea. And yeah, no, they didn't. They made another Bill and Ted movie, except they're old now. Yeah. The thing that upsets me about the new Bill and Ted, and I've said this a bunch of times, and I'll keep saying it over and over again, the two actresses who played the princesses in the first two Bill and Ted movies are still alive, and they're gorgeous, but they were not cast as, their, as Bill and Ted's wives in this film because those women actually aged gracefully and don't look like Bill and Ted do because they have had uh, uh, work done. Yes. And they don't look their age. And so they couldn't hire the women who actually look the way that Keanu Reeves should look. Yeah. And it pisses me off. Diane Franklin is a gorgeous actress. She was uh, the, the foreign exchange student in Better Off Dead, which is one of my favorite movies. Yes. And I follow her on Instagram and Twitter, and she's still goddamn gorgeous. And the fact that they didn't put her in this film... And the other one, the friggin' redhead, whatever, is just upsetting. It's upsetting to me. Yes. And they brought George Carlin back to life as like a hologram, whatever the fuck, in the new Bill and Ted. 
The same way that they brought Harold Ramis back from the dead? Yeah. Which pisses me off. But Ghostbusters was fun. I don't know. The Matrix was... Hey, I saw it. That was fun. Well, I'm sorry. The, the Matrix broke it with the second one for me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the first... I mean, like... Like... Okay, the second Matrix movie is The Empire Strikes Back. Okay? It, the whole movie is setting you up for that third movie. Yep. And it's setting you up with really kind of like a lot of interesting ideas. You know? Like... Yeah. I love and hate The Matrix 2. Okay? Yeah. I love what... I love how deep they were, they were taking it. The whole idea of the Matrix and how it's constructed and all of that. And how this anomaly, blah, blah, blah. Okay? I loved it. But then, it's like if Return of the Jedi was a pencil sketch. Yeah. You know? Like, like oh my god, Han is still caught in carbonite. Let's see the, see the third movie. And it's just like a drawing wah, wah, wah. that somebody took off of their refrigerator. And that's yeah. Jedi 3. That's Return of the Jedi. And that's Matrix 3. That's exactly... Matrix 3 was nothing much more than a big-ass action movie. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. okay, so what happened to all of this that you were talking about over here? in this other movie that now sucks because you didn't pay any of it off. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The Merovingian was in the new Matrix movie, and it's like, I vaguely remember you. I saw the second Matrix movie like two or three times. I just remember you as being like a hoity-toity douchebag that dragged the movie down. I don't remember you as being an important, integral part of the Matrix universe, but whatever. But I was I, right. But the idea of the Matrix just now being a video game and nothing else created by game designer Thomas Anderson, that could, no, be, but then, in, no, that but, could be intriguing, you know? No, but that's... But then you learn that that's what the ma the new Matrix gave him, and now he just thinks that he's crazy. No, I but, just want no, I just want to see game designer Tom Anderson go home to his wife Trinity and his two kids and their big fucking disappointments, and he just broke up with his side lady, you know. Yeah, and like, I, I, I'm just gonna sit back, have a six pack, and watch the fucking game now. Yeah, and that's I, the Matrix. Yeah, it's a lot of rehashing and just eh. It's it, it's it's fine, but it definitely seems like the Matrix Four and not the Matrix One. I mean, if basically, that makes I'm sense. saying, take, take Thomas Anderson from the first movie. Had he never taken the blue pill or the red pill, or whichever the fuck one. No, it felt like an explosion or an earthquake. Did you feel that? I have no idea what that was. It was either it was either an earthquake that I felt in the middle of funny talking, or some building exploded. What happened? I don't know. You were talking, and then suddenly out out like I felt the earth rumbling and what sounded like a freaking explosion. Out far outside somewhere. It I don't. You probably can't pick it up while watching, but it was. Fucking something. Okay. There's no like cloud outside somewhere or anything. So in about two minutes, maybe let's see if we hear sirens. Yeah. 
Because that was something. Yeah, I was thinking everything was fine. Jesus. I was, it like it was like a rumble out here. Yeah. Yeah, I felt it. I, I felt the ground. Oh. Then it must have been closer to this side because all I heard was sound of like somebody dropped something against the wall. Like, oh, no, nothing. I felt it down here and I could hear it out there. Oh, well, shit. Buddy's right. Let's wait and see if we can Yeah. It. Fuck. I was right about uh, Neil Patrick Harris's character. I don't want to say what, but I will say this. My dad used to have this book, and it was like the big book of rules of thumb. And they interviewed all of these professionals in different fields. And they asked him, they asked, and the, the author, the compiler, just said, what are rules of thumb for your business? And I used to flip through it all the time as a kid. And, and like there was a, a person who worked at theme parks, and he said, when you go into a theme park, uh, human beings are... Are, are like subconsciously trained to, I am entering, I will walk on the right side, just like traffic. Yes. And that side gets congested. So if you want to go through the park a little bit quicker, walk on the left side once you enter a theme park. There will be people walking a, a, towards you, but they will part when they see you, which will make it quicker to walk, not right now, than by walking on the right side with everyone else. And one, like a act like either a screenwriter or a playwright said in a mystery it's always the best actor who did it <laughs> and i'm like okay here are all these people in this movie Ooh, neil patrick harris plays a psychiatrist <coughs> i have a theory as to who he is and my theory was right so yay i was happy about that okay so cool. that's the main so that's the Matrix Red Erections. Uh, yeah, I'm eh, in a hurry. Yeah, it's fine. I'm, gl I'm glad I saw it at home and not in a theater because I could, like, watch 45 minutes and then pause it, go get myself a drink, go to the bathroom, complain about it to my wife, and then go back and see it some more. You know? So I was happy about that. If I had seen it in a theater, I would have been like, oh, fucking, yeah. So that was the Matrix Red Erection. It's as fine. And finally, the Steve Okay, but Stump now, now, have you revisited the original Matrix? I saw it in theaters like I, two Because now I am hearing, and it makes perfect sense to me, but I never thought of it, and it obviously must be going straight over my head, all the transgender references in the original Matrix movie. Yes, and that's why I feel bad about saying shit about this new Matrix movie because the first Matrix film really is a trans analogy and I see that and I love the first Matrix film and I really like it. I, and I do identify now as a woman and a trans woman and a trans woman of color and as a trans person. I, it, it's difficult for me to say this, but the new Matrix movie, eh. <laughs> it's fine, but I, I'm not going to hail it as a trans masterpiece. I mean, the first film is amazing and uh, historic and uh, genre defining, and it, it's an amazing movie. The second one, less so. The third one, even less so. The fourth one, eh. But the, yeah, the first one, I can see all of the trans analogies, and I respect that. Well, well, I'm saying but, they, they completely go over my head. I don't see them, although although hearing that, hearing that they're there is kind of like, well, duh. I mean, they must there, be. There are things. But I'm are, not seeing them. There are trans things in that film that I, in that first Matrix film, that I understand and that I see and that I relate to. Like, hey, I now realize who I am, and I am Neo, and I have changed who I am, but there's still that son of a bitch that's like, Mr. Anderson, and I'm like, fucking, don't dead name me. My name is Neo, bitch. That is so fucking interesting because I just I just never thought of it that way. Yeah, yeah. 
There, it's there's cool. definitely some trans shit in the Matrix film. Yeah. Yeah. And also, and, and see, and that was, and that's why I wanted to bring it up because it's kind of been bothering me because, like, it makes total perfect sense that the transgender people who made this movie <laughs> may have yeah. transgender references in it. You know. And realizing. But, Realizing you're trans and changing your life and changing who you are is a lot like you live in this comfortable, nice, fake world that you feel trapped in, and suddenly you're in pink goo, and you don't know how to walk. You don't know what food is, and you don't know who you are, and it's a, a slow, long process to getting to be... Who you really are. Yeah. So, so yeah, there, there's a lot of trans stuff in that first Matrix film. The second Matrix film is just uh, orgies in a cave. Yeah. And fighting on a freeway. But the first film, there's a lot of that shit. And I see that now. And I noticed that two weeks ago when I saw the first Matrix again in theaters. I'm like, okay, there's this. Okay, there's that. All right, there you go. I understand that. I'm, I'm going to have to give it another look with that in mind now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it's a, it's, the, the first one was, was an absolutely amazing movie. And yeah. completely oh. breakthrough. And yeah. very fresh. Yeah. You know? But it's, it's also like one of those ideas like... It floats around for a while... And it's just kind of out there in the zeitgeist, that sort of idea. Like, then a movie like The Matrix does it, you know? Yeah. And shows you what you've always kind of thought anyway. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, it's always been kind of an idea that reality is not reality. Yeah. In one way or the other. But it's really rarely been done. Yeah. You know, so like, The Matrix winds up being like really new and kind of old at the same time. I thought of this, our Christmas tradition is to watch Guardians of the Galaxy. And nice. Guardians of the Galaxy 2. So when they are actually having war through video games that's not like like why have we not seen this a whole lot more in movies yeah but this is basically the first time that we've actually seen it yeah but also last star yeah. fight the fighter does not count yeah it's it's a new idea am i too movies. high am i just rambling am i making any kind of sense you are pretty high but um, it, it's a new... Uh, the Matrix was a new idea for movies, but also it wasn't that new. Because I feel that a lot of the Matrix hadn't been seen in, in cinemas, but also I feel that a lot of the Matrix was, I've got a great original idea for a movie. What if David Icke was right? Yeah. So I, I, I feel that, that the, a lot of The Matrix was just that. Well, you know? no, because let's face facts, David Icke stole it from the fucking Matrix. <laughs> well, well I, it's some, some of that shit predates The Matrix film. Yeah. Some of it, but anyway. Yeah, you, you really should rewatch The Matrix uh, with uh, a trans mindset, because there's a lot of shit there. Yeah. It, 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 there's even there's even specific lines that like call it out like I am Trinity really are you surprised yeah I thought you were a, I thought you were you would be a man well, yeah most men think that hmm. you know like okay there you go that's some trans shit yeah it was it was weird for me to have watched the Matrix my entire life and then two weeks ago me. Put on my my chest 
and put makeup on and do my hair up and get dressed in my best female outfit and to have Mei Lin go out to the movies and watch The Matrix because a lot of it was just like, ooh, I am noticing things. This must have been what everyone was talking about. Okay, then. But when I watch The Matrix, I'm like, oh, a new Matrix film. This is going to be great. Okay. It's just a sequel. All yeah. right, then. It, it felt like The Matrix 3 revisited, you know? And it's yeah. like, okay, that's a little bit disappointing. But whatever. And finally, the Steve Stubbs movie pick of the week is Gizmo Del Toro's new film, Nightmare Alley. I call him, I, I, I want to call him Gizmo Del Toro because there is, it, Guillermo Del Toro is famous, but in my mind, there's only yeah. one Guillermo, and the vampires call him Gizmo. Yeah. So I'd like to, from now on, call this director Gizmo Del Toro, because that uh, makes I, sense. I, I, th I think it's a term of respect. Yeah, I think so too. Gizmo Del Toro's new film, Nightmare Alley. Because any... the other Gizmo is cool as fuck. Cool as shit. Cool as shit. And he's gay in real life. I'm hoping that eventually he, his character comes out as gay in the TV show What We Do in the Shadows. But until that happens, I'm just fine with him being the, like, Mr. Smithers to his vampire C. Montgomery Burns. I, I, feel, I feel toward him the exact same way I felt toward Willow on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Nice. Like, okay. Like, it's not like a sexual thing. Like, in both... I just want to hug them and be really, really nice to them. You know? Yeah. That's it. That's... I, I, I just want to... I just want to be really kind to them. Because they both yeah. look like they really just need it. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I get that. Uh... So I, I, would, I would call it a compliment, calling him Gizmo, but good Christ, does it ever drip Oscar bait? What, Nightmare Alley? Yeah, just from the previews and shit oh, I've seen. Oh, okay. Really, I'm, like, I'm like immediately turned off by its Oscar-ness. Okay, well, let me tell you. Let me tell you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you back. It's an old-time Carney sideshow movie. Yeah. It, it is, it, they don't show a lot of the carny shit, but I'd say about half of this film is in carnivals and sideshows, traveling uh, carnivals and freak shows and geeks and, you know, riding the rails, you know, going on trains and going from small town to small town and hard drinking and here's a strong man and here's the midget and here are all these carny workers and here are all of these, like, like con men and hustlers, and, and a lot of it feels like Todd Browning's Freaks, and the ending yeah. is kind of, sort of, in a way, Freaks-related, and it's, it's just an extremely well-done, old-timey, carny, sideshow, crime noir, and it's really great, and I really love it, but sadly, it came out the same day as Spider-Man... No more spider man all the spider men spider men -ing. Yes. And, and, and so everyone is seeing Andrew, I hate Mondays and love lasagna, lie about not being in the movie. A everyone's going to see the new Spider-Man, and no one is going to see Gizmo's new movie. And it's just sad, because this is a really good and well-done, captivating, carny noir film. And it's really great, and I love it. And it's about this guy, and he has this mysterious past that you eventually learn about. He's trying, you don't know who he is. He's like hiding his identity, and he's riding the rails, going from town to town, looking for a, you know, a way to start fresh. And he sees a carnival, and he gets a job there, and he, he tries to reinvent himself, and eventually he comes under the tutelage of this fake, a uh, psychic that's just hustling people as one of the sideshow acts. Yeah. And one of the rules is 
like, never do a spook show. What you're doing is, you're, you're getting some money, tricking people, having a fun time, doing fake uh, uh, psychic readings. Don't lie to people. Don't, don't say, hey, your, your dead mother is here, and her hand is on your shoulder, and I'm going to tell you this. That's a spook show. That is horrible. And it's one thing to be like a carny act in the, the sideshow act in the traveling carnival. It's another thing to do a spook show and never do a spook show. But uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Bradley Cooper. He starts doing spook shows, and the last like 15, 20 minutes of the film are just balls out insane. But it, it, it's a it's carny noir, and it's really really good. But sadly. Spider-Man did the film in because this has a huge budget, $60 million, some big names are in it, but it has only made $4 million at the box office. On a budget of $60 million, no one is going to see this. So yeah, it does look like Oscar bait, and it's going to be nominated for a few Oscars. Maybe Bradley Cooper will be nominated for something. Kate Blanchett's in it, and she does a great job. She'll be nominated for something. Maybe a Best Supporting Actor will go to the Green Goblin, who's in both films. Good for him. Yeah. But um, if this film was released pre-pandemic, it would have been great. <coughs> if this film was released any time besides right next to Spider-Man, it would have done great, and I think it would have been more of a hit. But sadly, Spider-Man did it in. I saw the, the movie came out on Friday. I saw it on Monday. Yeah, no but, one was at the theater. Why do you fucking open a movie against Spider-Man? Why? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas opened the same day as Matthew Broderick's Godzilla. Yeah. And that was Terry Gilliam's idea. And his idea was, you don't want to be seen leaving the theater for Godzilla, but you will want to be seen leaving the theater for a Hunter S. Thompson movie. And it's like, okay, I get that and I understand that, but also, if you know everyone's going to see this movie... I understand you thinking I'm going to be counter-programming, but yeah. that's just going to fuck up your budget. That's going to fuck up your box office gross. So it's a really good movie, and, and, and I, I might put it on my top ten list, I just, but I also feel sad for it because, like, oh, you, you done got fucked by the spider. Peter yes. Parker done fucked you up. You know? Yeah, I... Yeah, I... There's a world of difference between Godzilla and Spider-Man. Matthew Broderick's Godzilla, let me preface. Yeah, Matthew Broderick. Yes. Matthew Broderick. It's like Frankenstein. Matthew Broderick. But, but yeah, like, Spider-Man fucked this movie up. It is a great movie, and I really like it. But ain't no one going to see Gizmo's new movie. And that's a damn shame. That yeah. is a damn shame. So, yeah. uh... I don't know. Maybe I'll give it another... It's just... It's the Oscar Beatty... Shape of Water... Pan's Labyrinth... Guillermo del Toro that... I'm not particularly in love with. But I can't stress enough how much of a carny film this is. Yeah. You know? Uh, you know, it feels, it, sometimes it feels like a modern day, like not a modern day freaks, but in that world, you know, yeah. of just, you know, these carnies and they all know each other and they all are a family, but also they can't trust each other because they're all kind of fucking bastards, you know, yes. a lot of people with drinking problems and with drug problems and, and uh, oh, yeah, here's how you get a geek. To bite the heads off of chickens. Here's how we trick people into doing it. Here's the, here's the underbelly. Here's the drugs. Here's how you con a sucker. Here's how you find a mark. Here's how you read, you know, idiots. And it, it, so much of it is just that you can smell the carny that, that they're in. 
you know? Yeah. And it's just so good. But the movie just shows, like, Oscar Beatty stuff, but it, you can tell that Guillermo del Toro, you know, knows his carny freak show, carnival barker type shit, and it's, it's really fucking fun. Yeah. It's a fun-ass movie. But Spider-Man fucked it. The Matrix will, fucked will it. Will I have to... Will I have to watch Santa Santa Gray to understand it? Huh? <laughs> Will I have to watch Santa Santa Gray to understand it? Oh, no. Not at all. Not at all. It takes a while to understand what you're watching because it really just throws you into the deep end of like, here's this guy. Who, who is he? You have no idea. What's his name? Not telling you. What did he do? You have no clue. Watch him struggle for 15 minutes. And then I'm like, wait, who the fuck even is this person? So it takes a while for you to get your footing. But yeah. once you get to the carnival, it's just like, oh, God, this is great. This is fun. I love it. You know? A, a wonderful film. Really love it. It well, might make my top ten list. I'll put it on my will see list. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm hurt, I'm bitter, I, I'm big enough to admit that, okay? Yeah. We'll All right. see. Yeah. So that's it for Steve Stubbs this week. Next week, I have no idea what I'm watching. Uh, something. But uh, that'll be next week. So join us next week for more up-to-date movie reviews with Steve Stubbs of the Week. And cut on that. Do you want to take a little potty break before we get to uh, Bunny Versus? Nah, let's just go ahead. Okay. No, I'm good. Thank you, though. Thank you. A bit of dead name me on the podcast. I, it's, it's fine. I, for most people, I don't care if they dead name me. Because, like, I get, I've been, I've been Steve for, like, 40-plus years. If it's someone I care about... If, like, Max just says, you know, hey, Dad, oh, hey, other mother, it's like, okay, that's fine. I'm not going to be upset about it. If it's someone that I don't entirely love, that, that's going to piss me off, you know? No, I... You, you, if you say husband and then correct it to wife, I'll be like, that's fine. If, uh, say, a relative of yours that I don't know that well says, Hey, Steve, how's it going? Hey, why don't you get his present? I'm going to be pissed off. Speaking of, Bunny. Yes. Well, Are no, you just before we leave that, me, me personally, I'm calling you Steve and I'm calling you he, him, because that's the last that's thing fine. you told me. Yeah, When you because... choose to tell me something different, then that's what I'll do. And that's because I specifically told you <laughs> that I am Reverend Steve when I am doing this podcast. I am Mr. Steve when I'm recording a video for kids on my YouTube channel. And the rest of the time, I'm May Lynn. So if you still call me Steve and still say he, him, that's fine. Because I am Steve right now. Well, I'm just pushing it back into your lap where you... When you decide different, then you tell okay. me different, and then okay. different becomes whatever. Yeah, but I, I'm, st I'm still fine with being Steve right now. Because I feel that, like, I, I'm, not, I'm not sweating the pronouns. Yeah. As long as it's someone that I uh, care about. So there you go. Bunny, are you ready for another exciting, pulse-pounding, heart-stopping, uh, uh, genre-defining, uh, 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 crotch-vibrating, uh, intestine-clogging installment of Bunny Versus, our free-form, uh, off-the-rails discussion of whatever we want. Are you ready? Are you pumped? Are you amped? Are you jazzed? Are you psyched? Are you primed? Are you revved up? Are you ready to go? Do you have your motor running? Are you ready to take that hill? Yes, I back? am. <laughs> okay. Well, then, without any further ado, thanks, Eleanor.
It's time once again for Bunny Versus, and now here is your host, Bunny Williams. Take it away, buddy! I, I went out, like, for real. Yeah? Not my, not my, I have to go get more drugs run. <laughs> yeah? Or... Well, that's frankly about it. <laughs> nice. What What'd you do? I had to. I had to do it. I had to. I, I had to go see Spider Man. Oh, nice. Yeah. Spider Man. Love that movie. So, I, I'm not sure if I am loving it as much as everyone else. Yes, I did love it, but like. Hands down favorite Marvel movie, which I'm hearing quite a bit of. That kind of, I'm I'm not completely sold on that. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Like, I did love it. I did love it. Let's be clear, okay? But the whole premise of the movie of everybody knowing he's Spider Man and everything, like. That wound up being, like, really throwaway. Yeah. Originally, they weren't sure, Sony wasn't sure if they hadn't yet reached an agreement about Spider-Man continuing in the MCU. So when they first started Spider-Man 3, they were preparing for it to be in the Spider-Man Sony universe with no mention of the MCU. So originally, it was going to focus solely on everyone knows I'm Peter Parker. And because he's the most famous person in the world, it was going to feature one villain, Craven, the goddamn hunter who starts hunting him, and it was going to be Craven's last hunt. Yeah. Done as Spider Man 3. But then finally, they're like, oh shit, so we have reached an agreement with Marvel? Shit, let's put it all in. Yeah. But I don't know, I kind of would have liked to have seen it be more of a focus on, oh shit, everyone knows who I am, what do I do now? Yeah. And, and like, it was great to see Matt Murdock. It really was. Very exciting. Yeah. Spoiler alert, everybody, spoiler alert. But that was, yeah, spoiler alert, but that was also completely throwaway. It was. It was only for, like, this, like, five seconds. Yeah. Yeah. So... Hands down, favorite? No, it, it had it had some it had some problems. It had some rough spots. Uh, I don't know if I could blame the movie for the bullshit trailer Marvel threw us. I'm upset that I have to watch all of What If now. Yeah, yeah. What if I, I have? I watched What If. It's fun. I did not watch that, but. The character at the end of the trailer that plays at the end of Spider-Man 3 definitely shows a what-if character brought to life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's like, shit, I gotta watch What If. I, I hadn't watched any of What If. Maxwell was sitting on the floor of the living room watching it on TV, and I was here in my workspace, and I just ha happened to vicariously watch like half of one episode where Doctor Strange was killing everyone. So I was able to watch that trailer and go, shit, I gotta watch all of What If now. Because like, god damn, yeah. they're gonna be throwing me like uh, Captain Britain Peggy Carter in like a upcoming fucking Marvel movie or some shit like that, and now I gotta be prepared. Yeah. God damn it. I'm surprised that in 2021, where we're still in a pandemic, we got so much fucking Marvel shit in one year. Like, we got fucking WandaVision, fucking yeah. Loki, fucking Shang-Chi, fucking uh, Black Widow, fucking Eternals, fucking Spider-Man, fucking Falcon and Winter Soldier, which had its moments. Like, yeah. We got a lot of fucking Marvel shit this year. God damn. Yeah. 
But we're hungry for the big ones. Yeah. Yeah. And it's weird because, like, Shang-Chi was good, and I liked Spider-Man, but the other Marvel movies made me feel like, Damn, I think right now Marvel TV shows have a better track record than some of these Marvel movies. And, and can we please stop calling these season one and have people start talking about, ooh, season two? Like, I don't know. Let's just do it and be done, because that's the comic well, way. they are working on more Loki. That's the only one that has said, like, hey. But then make that a different show. Yeah, Don't make they it have Loki said, like, season two. That's the only one that they've said, like, Loki will appear and will return in season two. But it's like, okay, but I don't think we're getting season two of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. I don't think we're getting season two of WandaVision. I don't think we're getting season two of Hawkeye, which I loved. Hawkeye? Fucking love Hawkeye, yeah. I, I just got it. I haven't started watching it yet. Fucking love that. Absolutely love Hawkeye. Fun as hell. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm, I'm opening the beginning of every story time video for a while is going to be uh, Florence Pugh's character from Black Widow saying, Hi. That's going to be the opening to my videos for a while. Cause it's, <laughs> it's only like... Two seconds. And I'm just going to be using that for a while, for as long as I can get away with it. Yeah. I'm happy with that. That was a fun show. Yeah. yeah. What if was fun? And what if, what if was also bite-sized? They're only half hour. I, it, the weird thing is that What If was always one of my favorite comic books, but when the cartoon came along, I'm just like, I don't know, but... I'm not in a rush to see this, and I wasn't sure why, because I was a huge fan of the comic books. Oh, I love that. I love the What If comic book, because it's like, oh, you pick up an Avengers, it's like, good luck finding out what time frame you're in, because there's a thousand issues of this comic book. Yeah. And the same thing with Spider-Man, and then there was a period from like the 70s to the 90s where it's like, you pick up a Spider-Man comic, and congratulations. This is, part, this is part four of, like, a 30-part series that spawns the five different Spider-Man comics. Yeah. And it's like, to know what happened before this, pick up Web of Spider-Man number 384. To find out what happens after, get Spectacular Spider-Man number 386. And it's like, fuck! But you could get a what if, or a Marvel team-up, you get one story, and you're good. Yeah. So I loved those, but when What If came along, I'm like, ah, I don't know. This doesn't seem important. But, but I, now that I see the trailer for the new Doctor Strange, it's like, shit, What If is important. Now i got to sit down and watch this fucking thing. Ugh. <sighs> I mean, it seems like it's a it's a test bed kind of a yeah. thing, you know? Yeah. Where, yeah, yeah you, you could try any kind of weird-ass shit. Both the comic and the cartoon, I think they kind of share this. Yeah. Whether it winds up feeding into other things, uh, we're going to see. I guess it's a matter of how popular it is. Yeah. I don't know. I, don't I know. would still love a live-action Marvel Zombies. Yeah. Eh. I never liked the Marvel Zombie cur uh, comics. I, would, I read some of them, but I don't know. It, it just felt like the Marvel Zombies, where zombies were popular, were putting them in Marvel somehow. Yeah. You know? And, and, and that's like, all it needs to be, though. Come on. What's it need to be? Yeah. But I felt that it was like a product of its time. And it's like The Walking Captain Dead is America everywhere. Eating people. Yeah, I, they did appear at, at Disney. They, there was a zombie Captain America at the Disney theme parks. 
during <laughs> Halloween. Yeah. Because in Disney's California Adventure, they have a Marvel Avengers campus part of that theme park. And during Halloween, they had Agatha Harkness from WandaVision, and they also had Captain America zombie show up. I thought that was awesome. So, so that is it. That's what I report. I went out, and there were people out there, and I still don't like them. People stop. There you go. It should be fasting. Uh, so we had a lot of people over for Christmas. Yeah? Yeah. That was... Surprising, especially since last year, no one was over for Christmas because we were still in the pandemic and we had just gotten over getting the freaking coronavirus. But this year, we had a lot of people over for Christmas. They were all vaccinated. You know, Emerald came over with Jeremy, who she's living with. They were both over. Jeremy is starting to walk. He can walk a little bit without crutches and his cool. eye doesn't that messed up, and, you know, he's getting... Side. He's getting back to normal. And then Amber was over with his boyfriend, John, her boyfriend, Jonathan. Good kid. Uh, he got me a Star Wars makeup kit. Amber's not here? Is Am Amber's not here? No. Okay, great. Amber's boyfriend, Jonathan, is super into Star Wars, and he came... It, when he first started coming over to the house... He noticed that in my crazy, insane background, I had some Star Wars stuff. I have this super expensive uh, lightsaber that was gifted to me. And he's like, oh, you like Star Wars? Okay, let's talk about The Mandalorian. What do you think about this new series they're going to start up? Have you read this book? Have you played this video game? And I'm like, shit. How do I break it to him that I like the first three movies and maybe Rogue One? And after that, I don't give a fuck about Star Wars. How do I have this conversation that I like everything that was done in Star Wars prior to 1998? How do I have this conversation with this boy? Yeah. So I've just been pre kind of sort of pretending to be into Star Wars, but he did, the, he did the nicest thing, and he got me a Star Wars makeup set. Yeah. Not even for Christmas. He just gave it to me. It, 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 it's a... Uh, all of these makeup brushes for Mei Lin, and each one is a lightsaber, and one of them for like your fat to put on your foundation, it's a Darth Vader's lightsaber, and it lights up as you're putting your makeup on. Yeah. And it's like, oh, you're he's a real nice freaking kid. And it's weird because like he started calling me dad when he comes over. And it, it, and then when I came out, he started calling me other mother. And when he first did that, I'm like, this is really weird. But after, like, the, the second time, I stopped giving a shit. He's like a member of the family. He's <coughs> really nice. And I really like the boy. He, he, he's, yeah. he's really nice. And he was over. And then Day came over. Uh, my niece... Former, my nephew, yeah. nephew, former nibbling, now nephew, and Christian, and then uh, Jaden, cousin Jaden came over, and, and it was just like a big family Christmas gathering, and, and that was surprising, but it was really good, and it was very special to me, because it was my first uh, Christmas as a woman, and... Uh, every year, my parents send the kids cards, and there's money in the cards, and they send some money for me, and maybe a few presents that they've picked up in, like, Mexico or whatever for the kids, yeah. and it, they always send us a big Christmas present. They always send us uh, a little bit of money. They always send the kids cards every Christmas, every single solitary Christmas. But, like, a month <coughs> or two ago, I was high, <laughs> and... I sent my parents some pictures of the kids, and they always like that. Here's a picture of uh, Max and Eleanor. Here's a picture of Mal and Amber. 
here's a picture of Emerald. And then I was high, and I'm like, fuck it. Here's a picture of me in my best dress and makeup on. And after that, they stopped talking to me. Yeah. Again. And so it was Emerald's <coughs> birthday, and Emerald was here. And Emerald was opening presents, and I was taking pictures of, em of Emerald. And I thought, if I send my parents a picture of Emerald and put, it's Emerald's birthday today, they will have to talk to me. And so I did that. I sent Emerald, I sent uh, my parents a picture of Emerald. And my parents said, oh, tell Emerald we say happy birthday. We can't send you anything this year, but maybe next year. Have a happy Merry Christmas. And that was the last I've heard of my parents. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure they're not sending me anything because I'm in a dress <coughs> this year. Yeah. But whatever. On Christmas Eve, my wife and I had to go out and run some errands. And it, I, I, I was all done up, all nice. I had a nice outfit on, and I had done my hair, and I did my makeup. I shaved, and I looked really good. I put some, some perfume on. I smelled really good, and I was looking all good, and I had my purse on and my boobs on, and I was looking great, and I was feeling like a woman. And we went to buy some stuff and to buy some, like, stocking stuffers. And while we're there, the woman is at the register is just like, here you go, ma'am, to my wife. And then it's like, oh. Uh, here's your card back, sir, to me. And it just really put me in this funk that I got misgendered at the store. And, and I was just really upset about that. And it's just frustrating because when I am male presenting and I'm out, hey, I got to run to the store and pick up some, some milk. Okay, yeah. I'm not going to get dressed up. I'm just going to go, uh, you know, male present to the store. That's going to be fine. So I go and... I, I don't have my boobs in. I don't have makeup on. My hair's all ratty. I'm wearing like a like a just some random T-shirt. And I go out and I, I want to get past this old guy, you know, at the supermarket. And the guy says, "Oh, I'm, I'm very sorry, ma'am. Here you go, ma'am. Have a have a great day, ma'am." And I'm like, "Fuck!" But I'm male presenting right now. Stop calling me ma'am. But then I go, "Okay." well, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my makeup on and my boobs on and, and a nice necklace, and I'm going to look great, and I'm going to go out, and everyone gives me cert, and it pisses me the fuck off. Choose a gender for me, you fucks. <laughs> it, it's just so fucking frustrating. And then we come home, and my father-in-law is here with his husband. Yeah. And... He came out as gay, finally, a few years ago, and he married his boyfriend, and I'm happy that my father-in-law is living his truth, finally, and I support him and his marriage. I support my father-in-law and my other father-in-law, my father's-in-law. But it feels like he's pretty transphobic. They were at home, and, they're, and, and I'm there with my boobs and my makeup, and I'm looking all good. I got my scrunchie on my wrist. I got a yeah. nice necklace on. And they're like, so, Steve, how you doing? And it's like, bitch, I know you know my name is May Lynn. Fuck you. Yeah. God damn it. It's so upsetting. And then they're like, uh, oh, where's Gizmo? Oh, Gizmo's in their room. Well, get her out here. And it's like, don't say that to Mal either. Fuck. And, and it's like, you want everyone to be supportive of your lifestyle while not being supportive of mine. And, and Mal's and Days. And it's like, that's fucked up. Well, it's not look, just LG or LGB. Look, while they most likely 100% still would have dead name day, uh, 
Day hasn't told them. I understand that Day hasn't told them. But they still would have. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that that's one they didn't know about. But Day but hasn't told know. them because Day knows that, like, there's no point in telling yeah, them but, that but because they are transphobic. Yeah, I asked him about it, and if he had told them, and he said, why would I? Yeah. And I was like, damn, yeah, you're right. And, and I understand why Day did that, because I did tell them, and they don't care. Yeah, or they make a face. So that was fun. But it was, but still it was a nice, it's so, so I tweeted about this. Yeah. I tweeted about this on Twitter, and it got a few likes, <coughs> and uh, a little bit of this and that. But you know who, who wrote a really nice thing of acceptance to try and make me feel better? Mr. Lobo. Yeah. Yeah. And I and I and I really appreciate that. And and let me tell you why. He has a he has a trans son. And I I I used to know that son. Before they were before they realized before, before they, they realized that they were trans. trans. Yeah. Before okay. before the transition. Uh we used to hang out at Mr. Lobo's house back in Sacramento. And yeah. so the fact that like they were they were a kid's buddy they were Mal's buddy yeah yeah back in the day and now they're both trans and now they're both trans yeah so it means a lot to me that Mr. Lobo would send some uh, words of support and encouragement to me on Twitter like that is really nice I understand why you did that and I appreciate that you did that like fucking okay ten points for Mr. Lobo. Wasn't expecting to say that, but there you go. Yeah. So I was really happy about that. But but besides uh, uh, wrestles with gender and uh, misgendering, it was a really nice Christmas. Uh, I made a music playlist that we listened to all day that wasn't that insane, and it, I made I made like a three gigabyte movie. That was just different cartoon, uh, classic Christmas cartoon specials. So it's yeah. like Frosty the Snowman, and then Charlie Brown, and then the Grinch, and then Rudolph, and then like I, I think Abed's claymation special from Communities on there. And that <laughs> we watched that all day, and that was a lot of fun. And I have this this holiday tradition where. There's this Oklahoma brewed sour beer. I think it's called Slush. Yeah. And it's like a sour, it's like a strawberry lemonade sour beer. And I, I only drink it on the holidays. And it's just my one little tradition of myself. And it's like, oh, it's Christmas time. It's time to wrap presents. And drink this weird sour beer. It's like my third year drinking this weird sour beer. So I had a good Christmas. How was your Christmas, Bunny? It was nice. We're getting ready for this holiday th thing. So that's in a week. So it's like final preparations. Because, you know, you make the calls for the holidays. And then there's, there's arrangements that need to happen still. That kind of thing. Yeah. And things yeah. to work out. So it was nice. Nice. That was good. That's good. It was nice. We had a nice prime rib, which was fucking Ooh. delicious. Did you pour a glass of water on it? A glass make of it a sloppy water? Steak? Yeah, make it a sloppy steak. You didn't have sloppy steaks? No. Oh, okay. I love sloppy steaks. Big rare cut of meat with water poured on it. Makes the night so much more fun. After the club, go get sloppy steaks at Trafani's and the waiters say, hey, no sloppy steaks. But they can't stop you from ordering a steak and a glass of water. And next thing you know, we're pouring water on those steaks. That is sounding so familiar, and I'm not it's placing it. Huh? It's from it's from season two of I think you should leave. My my vocabulary is about fifty percent Tim Robinson quotes now. 
we were watching Charlie Brown's Christmas, and I'm like, oh, great, a bald boy. I think I'm back in the pants. <laughs> and it's like I ate so much food that I feel like I'm a chunky. I'm going to take away your points and make you wear your own hat. That's a chunky. I'm also quoting. Uh, I got really upset in a, on on Christmas Eve because we're staying up and and we're getting ready for Christmas and Mal sitting on the couch and and it's like, oh, I've turned on Netflix. Maybe I should watch something. And I'm just here in the corner going, smash, 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 smash. Watch smash. It's time to watch smash. We're all here. We're all in the living room. Put on Saturday Morning All-Star Hits. This is my one chance. But no, they watched some weird documentary about aliens. It wasn't a documentary. It's a, what if we found life on other planets? And it was amazing. I imagine it's amazing, but God damn it, I wanted everybody to learn about Randy the Teenage Dinosaur. Can we back And the creator Criddle. Can we back up, though, Bonnie? He's, 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 they are lying to you because we didn't watch that until... Wait, did we watch that first? Oh, we watched did that watch first. that first. Yeah, and I went to sleep before you guys started watching Bill Nye talk about... We didn't watch Bill Nye until after we watched Single All the Way, which was the gay, very yes. Hallmark Christmas movie. Yes, I went to sleep... I wasn't the other one to watch it! I went to sleep halfway through the gay Christmas... What was it called? Single All the Way. Single it has All the Way. Everything. Okay. <laughs> it has all the truth. It's got the... There was only... Uh, and then they they could have totally ended up Polly, and it didn't. God, the person that his mom said, "Oh, it had what's her nuts in it." What's her name? The I don't know. One. I wasn't watching it. The blonde one, uh, Stifler's mom, Jennifer Cougar. Cougar. Jen Coolidge. 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 Jennifer Coolidge had her in it, and it had one of the. She's Anderson big sisters. with the gays, so that makes sense. She's big with the gays. Had one of the Sanderson sisters in it as the mom, and like. Oh, my my big Greek wedding, that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, but it was really good. And then we started watching Bill Nye, which fucking everybody needs to watch that Bill Nye show. You, you watched a, an entire series, and then you watched an entire movie, and no, then no, you no, started no, no, watching no, no, an entire no, no, another no, no, series, no, 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 and you no, didn't no, watch no. Zuzzy no, 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 and that no, no, just no, no, upset no. me on Christmas Eve. Listen. There was only four episodes in that episode in that series. But you still season, watched all season of them. One. There's only one season. There's only four episodes. So you watched the whole season. Yeah, but if there was only four. But you still watched the whole season. That's not even like a whole season. It's okay. supernatural. Okay. You can't. You can't. You but can't. you still watched the whole season. I just wanted y'all oh, to watch and Skip my... and Treyborn. Fucking. What you you need the Skip and Treyborn experience. You really do. I never said I didn't want it, but it was Christmas Eve, and I was going to watch a Christmas movie. I just want someone else in this house to sing Johnny Rad's hit single, Shut Up With. Turn it into a duet. Johnny Rad is amazing. I... He totally didn't kill that girl. Start doing your pop culture references through osmosis. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. Well, my pop culture references are pretty zuzzy zazz. <laughs> yeah. But you need the context. We, I just want someone to, 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 to do Criddle Glitter with. Yeah, we need to do Criddle Glitter together. I never said I wouldn't. That brings the creativity out. The Criddle Glitter. I okay. I'm on the record saying I never said I wouldn't. Okay. It's a mess, know. but that's where the magic happens. You got that right. I love the shoes where you make the hole. That, that, oh, I still I can't. That one. Yeah, you saw that commercial. It was only like three seconds. You don't get all the commercials because you're watching video tapes. And so whoever taped these things you're watching cut out the commercials. So you don't get a lot of commercials. You get bits of commercials because that's how it was back in VHS. I'm going to take this commercial out, but you might leave a little bit in before the show starts. Because you don't want to miss it. And now, back to Smash! Yeah. Randy! Yeah. So, so that's all I've got. 
for Bunny versus Single of the Way. I'll, that I'll try and remember this that. Week. Yeah, I'll try and remember Single of the Way Did for you next tell Bunny Christmas. About the Oculus? Oh yeah. Okay. So Emerald's boyfriend Jeremy got a lot of money from the car accident he was in and bought our family for Christmas, gave us an Oculus VR headset. Oh. How, how much is that shit? $300. $300? He's a very, okay, he's a very... I keep, hold on, I keep, I keep accidentally uh, unplugging the... default microphone yeah okay anyway uh he's a very giving person he very is. caring and loving and if it's like he's the type that will give you the shirt off his own back yeah. if you need it and so he he likes to give people things it's i think it's one of his love, love languages yeah you know and our our two youngest like going over to his house and spending a day with emerald and jeremy and, and his family. Yeah, and Jeremy has an Oculus headset, and Max and Eleanor will spend time playing with that. So Jeremy said, uh, gave us an, an Oculus headset, a, a very expensive Oculus headset for Christmas, and Eleanor's playing it right now. Oh, don't hey, touch hey, okay, that. No, no, okay, no. you're about to hit the table. You need to back up. It's crazy. I haven't used it yet. I used it for a few seconds with Natasha. But... Oh my god, Bunny. If you have access to one of these, get so fucking high and then do one of the 360 VR. Like, I went, I went into the ocean. I was watching Waterfall before it died on me. Oh, that was the best. Uh, I, I went, like, ziplining. Oh. VR headsets are incredible for it when is, they're high. It is. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't, have, I don't think I have interest in it when I'm not, but... Man, you get me, get me pretty high. Put that thing on my head, and I'm gonna, I can watch that waterfall forever. Pass out in the VR, <laughs> watching I, the waterfall. I'm, I'm just kind of amazed. I'm just thinking like you're walking through the cracks of doom, and the lava is flowing everywhere and spewing up, and you're trying to make your way to where you could throw in the ring. And then all of a sudden, your parents run up to stop you from walking into the coffee table. That is an awesome yeah. concept in and of itself. Oh, no, no. Yesterday, Eleanor put it on and uh, was doing a museum tour on YouTube. And so when you're doing these, these people have to have these, like, selfie sticks. And they're, way, they're like, right above their head. And, you know, it's recording 360. <laughs> Eleanor got Eleanor got the so shit scared out of her out. because she was doing a 360 YouTube video and she turned and realized that He's holding me. I don't like the way this feels. He's holding me. He's holding the camera and I'm the camera. I, what if I fall? Yeah, they were I scared. Was dying. We had I had to take it off of her. Because off someone's of that. holding the 360 camera, which is your POV. So she's watching this, they're watching this video and it's all fun. And then they turn and realize, oh shit, some random stranger is holding me right now. And then they freak out because they're like, what if I fall? I can't look down. I'm, I'm so scared. And so I had to take the headset off and re <laughs> re-put them on something that they, they could actually watch without being afraid. Yeah. It I'm, was hilarious. I am... Well, I'm hoping that later tonight I can use the Oculus and do some 360. Uh, there's a lot of 360 videos of people who just go on Disney rides. And it's like, shit, I want to go on Pirates. I'm going to go on fucking, oh, the Tiki Room? That would be great in VR. Yeah, I can't. There's, I can't. I'm going to just use it to go to Disneyland. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. And that's okay, because, I mean, the games are kind of expensive. The games are crazy expensive. So, yeah, using it for 360 videos, I think, is probably the majority of what we're going to do. Yeah. I really want to buy Trover Saves the Universe, written by Justin Roiland, who co-created Rick and Morty. You know, you're but that's like space, 30 bucks. Yeah, I know. Okay. I love the Bunny versus graphic with space. 
Thank you. Something I was kind of playing with. Yeah, because I'm really happy to finally have a background where that that has not yet been corrupted by capitalism. <laughs> Spies! So I'm really happy about that. Yeah, so this is this has been a very long act to yes. one. But, they, but it's our the, Christmas episode. We're not they doing do it. Have to, they do have to watch Smash. You know, yes, I mean, they do. Thank you. Skip and Trayvor. I'm part of the Skip and Trayvor fan club now. You know? Yeah. And part of their Facebook book group. So, uh, Skip shoots me a video the other day, and it's Skip and Trayvor. And they're like, Bunny! Wow. We just want to know what you think of self adhesive tape. Oh my god. Oh my god, what did you what did you say? It did. That's awesome. They what what did they did say? What did you say? And I just looked back at them and I said Self adhesive tape? Yes, please. Nice. Nice. And cut on that. And cut on that. Buddy! Yes! Uh, we still have a movie to get to. 1972's Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny. Uh, all new take on it. Don't first, you first dare. First time watch. Yeah, don't you dare go this back year? and listen to the other five episodes of this that we've done before. Just trust me when I say this is an all new take. But before we get to that, maybe we should take a break. Should we take a break? We should, in fact, take a break. Okay, I think that that idea is really zuzzy zad. We will be right back with more of the Pope on Film after this. Do 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 me, Reverend Steve. I am nervous because I'm going to drink a 41-year-old beverage that might kill me. There was a TV show called Dallas. Dallas was a soap opera that originally premiered in April of 1978 as a miniseries, but the miniseries was so popular that in September of 1978, they decided to turn it into a short one-season TV show. It became so popular that it ran from 1978 to 1991. One character, uh, Bobby Ewing, was killed off, but he was so popular that they decided to make his death a dream. Really stupid. And then, of course, the, the main character was sort of the, the patriarch of the family. His name was J.R. Ewing. In the 1980s, they made a beer. 
premium beer. J.R. Ewing's private stock came out in the year 1980. And it says on the bottom here, if you have to ask how much my beer costs, you probably can't afford it. I purchased very cheaply a six-pack of this. One had a hole in it, and it was empty. But the other five were still open and sealed. And so I put this in the fridge for a while, and I'm going to drink it. Surprisingly, I posted about this on Twitter, and I'm like, hey, I've got this 41-year-old beer. Who wants to see me try it? And the answer was a big, resounding, no, are you serious? You could die. Which I wasn't expecting from Twitter, but I basically got shamed. And uh, so I'm going to open this. This is weird. Do you see this? How, how do I? Ooh, look at that. That's the That's weirdest. Like the huh? Like the old V8? Yeah, yeah, it's like V8. Okay. So, um, all right. Shake it. No, I didn't shake it. I'm going to drink a 41-year-old beer now, so Pinky's up for the classy stuff. So, okay. Hmm. First off, it tastes dusty. <laughs> It might be a little dust on the bottom. But when you get past that, okay, so you know when when you're like young, when you're like in your 20s, and you're like, I'm going to go get beer. The cheapest beer imaginable. Okay, so so there's like, there's like cheap beer that will burn your mouth because it's horrible. And then there's cheap beer where it's like Mickey's. That's what this is. This isn't bad, but it's also not good. It 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 tastes all right. It tastes all right. This is pretty good. This is pretty good. It tastes cheap. It doesn't taste as uh. As a premium as J.R. Ewing from the hit show Dallas, but no, this is all right. This is pretty good. I wouldn't recommend it, but yeah, this isn't that bad. It's cheap and dusty, but I've I've drank cheap and dusty beer before. You know, go into some sketchy convenience store and they have a 98 cent uh, pint of some beer you've never heard of before. And you buy that, that's what this tastes like. Uh, it's not that bad. Not that bad. It's all right. This is a weird video, but hey, thanks for watching. And if you're watching this during the podcast, hey. Break time. Buddy and I are peeing. I had some crazy nicknames back in the 70s. But all those friends died in the 80s. I wonder who else I can talk to. Hello? Hey. Kind of cute. What's your name? Nancy? Oh, hi, Nancy. Stand by your window so I can see you. You stand a million miles away. Oh, I'm sorry, hon. I'm not allowed to have windows uh, court ordered. So, um, you sound kind of foxy. Uh, if it's not too personal, when was the last time you had sex? Coming up on the seventh day. It's okay, I checked Guinness. The record's 11. Listen, I know who he is. Uh, you know who, who what is? The killer. What killer? What the hell are you babbling about? And if he gets me, I'm pretty sure you're next. Whoa, 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 what, what kind of shit are you getting me into, pumpkin? 
Just give me some help nailing the guy when I bring him out. What are you babbling about? My dream. What? <laughs> if I can't, then you can all relax because it's just a case of me being nuts. Yeah, and for, and for some reason this is really turning me on. And you won't mind cold cocking this guy when I bring him out. What? <laughs> you heard me. I grab the guy in my dream. You see me struggling, so you wake me up. We both come out, you whack the fucker, and we got him. Um, Pumpkin, please, please explain to me what you mean by whack. Meet me at my porch at dawn. Oh, and meanwhile, whatever you do, don't fall asleep. Okay, Pumpkin, you're freaking me out, but for some reason I'm also finding you very attractive. So, uh, how about you and me be girlfriend and boyfriend, huh? <laughs> this week. Go back to the movie. Spider baby. Come on, come on, be my spider baby. Yeah. Don't be afraid, girl. Come on, come on, be my spider baby. Yeah. I feel better, don't make sugar. Spend your pride from me. I'm a spider, and my name is Bitey. I'm a Leo, and I love dewy spider webs in the sunset, long walks on the pavement, and hiding in shoes. And I'm looking for a special female, and girl, not everyone sees you the way I do. So let me look deep inside all eight of your beautiful eyes. And I don't see human like other people do. I see a glorious spider, baby. Yeah. So I want to let you know. I'd play spider with you all night long. Shimmy here. Up next to me. And do that stanky spider dance you do. So shake that Sephora thorax. And your abdomen do. Ah, girl. Come on, come on, be my spider, baby. Yeah. Be my spider, baby. Come on, come on. And I know how it is when a male spider tries to show you what he's made of. And I gotta let you know, I don't mind dying for just one night of sweet spider love. If that's what it takes to get near your girl. A hungry female may consume any invertebrate that comes along, including her shooters. But baby, but baby, I don't mind. Because you're truly worthy. You're worth it, baby. My pedipals are palpitating, circulating. I could be perspirating, but I can't because I got an ectoskeleton. But that don't matter, nah. So let me be your daddy, baby. Hopelessly tangled up in your silky web. Let me kiss your fangs before you jump off my head. Yeah. Mm. Come on, come on, be my spider, baby. Yeah. One, two, one, two. Come on, come on, be my spider. You know what you do, girl. Yeah. I feel better, don't make sugar. Come on. Spend your pride. In many spider species, females eat the males after sweet, sweet love. But I don't mind. Nah. You see, I got eight boots on my legs for knocking. I notice you do too. Spider baby rocking all night long. You see, even spider love is blind. Come on. Ooh. Come on. 
Come on, come on, be my spider baby. Sixty boots of spider knocking. Come on, come on, be my baby. I spider girl. Yeah. Ooh. I feel that in your face, sugar. You know it's you, girl. Come on, girl. come on, come on, be my spider baby. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be afraid. <laughs> come on, come on, be my baby. Yeah. Be my spider baby. Yeah. yeah. Come on, come on, be my spider baby. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be your daddy spider lonely. Come on, come on, be my baby. Musty odors invade your space. Get Concrobium Mold Control. As it dries, only Concrobium crushes mold and mildew at its roots, leaving an invisible antimicrobial shield so it won't grow back. It's odorless, too. For the safe way to defend your home from mold and mildew, Concrobium. And don't forget to protect against musty odors and moisture damage with Concrobium Moisture Grabbers. You don't have to imagine that we're back. Because we are. Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny, uh, based on the Shakespearean play of the same name. To to be clear, this is some high class stuff that we are talking about here. If my friends knew where to find me, they would be here. One, two, three. So here I sit patiently. Okay. okay, found it, found it. Okay, I found it. I'm gonna try... I found a little thing for you, Bunny. Call it a Christmas present. I'm gonna... I'm gonna uh, send it to you over uh, Messenger. Who will give me a helping hand and get my sleigh out of the sand? My reindeers left me sitting here. It was just too hot for them, I fear. My Christmas <laughs> lacks its you. Well, fun fact, um, you know who plays Santa in this? Moving. Uh, George Papard. Yeah. Before he died, he considered this his greatest role. Also, I'm not sure if he's dead. Yes. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Hi. Okay, Bunny. Bunny, I'm um, sending it to you now. Before we get into this week's movie, um, in 2015, 
they made a retro style 8 bit video game based on the movie Manos the Hands of Fate. Yes. It, it I bought it on like the Google Play Store and I had it on my phone and it was one of those things where I had it on my phone I would play with it for a while I would delete it then I'd go back I download it again after like 6 months but after like a year or two it got taken off of all of the like Google and Apple Play Stores because there were there has been for the longest time a struggle with the legal rights of who exactly owns Manos the Hands of Fate but now the original creators of the game, uh, Freak Zone Games, has posted it on their website as uh, a game that's uh, pay what you want. You can pay $1,000 for it, or you can pay $0 and download it and play it on your computer right now. I just sent you the link for Manos, The Hands of Fate, the game. You can download it on your computer. It's free to play. My favorite part of the game, you play through the movie, but you're not just fighting Torgo and fighting the master. They put a bunch of characters from a bunch of other bad video games. Uh, the Screaming Skull screams at you and attacks you. You get attacked by Killer Shrews. Uh, I... I, I not only am going to have to download this game, I'm going to have to see if I could live stream that. Yeah, it, it's a really fun game. Uh, I keep getting stuck on when you fight the portrait of the master above the mantle. But one time I got to, I believe, level four, which is a flying level for no reason whatsoever, other than the fact that the boss of the flying level is the giant claw. Cool. Which I think was our first movie we ever did. It was our first movie. Yeah, so you fight the giant claw. It's a really fun game, and you play as Mike, and you got the gun, and the first boss is Torgo, and he doesn't really do anything. He's just walking around with his weird-ass legs. It's such a fun retro-style game, and it's available right now for free, and everyone should definitely weirdest picture you've ever picked for a podcast movie. <laughs> you always try and go for something different. This time you really went different. I was not expecting to see this. Great, though. That is great. That is there, great. There is, that is... Like, there is not even pictures of this movie in any good variety. You know, so yeah. I I wanted I wanted Thumbelina because we're doing this is the Thumbelina version that we're covering. Yeah, and really this good. is the other Thumbelina picture that I found. Yeah. So specifically, if anyone out there is watching and wants to download the game, the website is Freak Zone, F R E A K Z O N E Games dot itch i-t-c-h dot i-o slash manos and you can download the game for free right now it's fucking fun as hell and I was gonna do a playthrough for my um kid friendly YouTube channel but they really frown on any videos that feature guns okay for kids for a kids video so um I might still do it, but I'm not sure. But anyway, um, Bunny! Yes. Very serious here. Uh, we like to joke and play games on this podcast of being very serious. It is time, once again, for our annual discussion of perhaps one of the greatest Christmas movies of all time. Move over, Fragile. <coughs> Move over, Merry Christmas, movie house! No. One of the greatest films of all time. One of the greatest Christmas films ever made. Yes. The 1972 film, Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny. Uh, and this year, I watched it no less than nine times. And I wrote, I wrote all new notes yes. about this film. And I took a deep 
fresh new dive into the history of this film and how and why it was made. And again, these are all new notes, never before uh, said or heard before this point. So just take my word for that. You don't have to go back and listen to episode 105 or episode 154. Or episode 198, episode 241, or episode 285. Just trust us. This, our sixth annual discussion of Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny, is all new. Never before heard. Look yes. at an amazing film. Um, a specific Joe Don Baker joke? I have no idea what you're talking about. This is an all new discussion of Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny, okay? So, all new, never before heard uh, look at this amazing film. Well, Poffies, it's the holiday season. Time to hang up your stockings, light your menorah, hide your painted eggs. Time to wear some green or else you'll get pinched. How weird is St. Patrick's Day? It's the sexual harassment holiday. (laughs) Oh, hey. Here's the holiday where we all get drunk and pinch strangers. What the fuck? That's weird. I hope that the coronavirus cancels St. Patrick's Day. Not the drinking part, but the pinching strangers part. Anyway, yes, it's the holidays. Uh, It's time for the annual pilgrimage to Mecca, everybody. Yes, it's time once again for Maxwell and I to undertake our annual Hodge. Maxwell's favorite part is the drinking from the well of Zamzam, but my favorite part is, is of course, the counterclockwise running around the Kaaba. So I guess I'm just old-fashioned like that. Yeah. Uh, Yes, my friends, it's time to talk about the true meaning of Christmas, getting in costumes and getting free candy. Uh, it's about eating uh, an insane amount of turkey and falling asleep in front of a football game. It's about candy hearts and the birthday of America. Christmas is the day of the year where we celebrate the birth of Jesus by becoming the angriest, greediest motherfuckers on the face of the earth. Yes. Christmas is also about Christmas movies. And you know, there's been so many classic Christmas movies made over the years. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, Iron Man 3, uh, Die Hard. Not only do I think that any film that has Christmas in it is a Christmas movie, I also feel that movies released on Christmas Day are Christmas movies, which is why my favorite Christmas movie is Four Rooms! Could also probably be considered a New Year's movie. A New Year's movie? Because it's set on New Year's Eve. There are a lot of people talk about Christmas movies. What about New Year's movies? Uh, Four Rooms is a good really New Year's movie. Any. Yeah, so Four Rooms is a good one. And then, of course, uh, the greatest Christmas movie of all time, this week's film, which saves you both time and money by being two, two, two crappy movies in one. It's the notoriously hideous cinematic stillborn known as Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny! Bunny! Yes. This week's movie is so bad that a lot of people, including some bad movie lovers out there, have never even heard of this movie, let alone seen it. It's an under-the-radar bad movie. But of course, the difficult part about this movie is how to explain it without sounding completely insane. Um, The basic plot is, is that... Okay, the movie focuses on Santa Claus, who... It should be noted, (laughs) rates a 9.5 on the Joe Don Baker sweat meter. I have never said that joke before. No. Which is why it's so hilarious. It's brand new to me. Brand new. Santa crashes his sled on a beach in Florida. That's uh, Florida the state, not Flo Rida the rapper. That is a joke that is 100% new and fresh here in the year 2020 and not six years ago. <laughs> uh, the reindeer leave him because it's too hot. Um, fuck off, reindeer. 
rude ass. And I usually don't pay attention to that much of uh, uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the classic stop-motion animated. I didn't realize Rudolph was the son of Dasher. Really? Yeah, I was really paying attention this year to Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Who ever heard of a Charlie in the box? But, yeah, he's the son of one of the Santa's reindeer. So, uh, uh, yeah, um, what's that word where you you hire your family? Nepotism. Wow, nepotism much? Yeah. Not cool. Uh... And, and and being a disappointment to your successful parents. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So uh, a bunch of people try and get Santa out of the sand. Uh, Santa summons kids in his sleep, which is weird. That's like a new mutant power for him, which I don't understand. He summons kids, a gorilla, a donkey, uh, some other animals that are probably taken directly from a specific theme park petting zoo, which we'll get to in a little bit. Yes. Then out of nowhere, a whole different movie breaks out. Yes. And just like the movie Clue, there are different movies. Most of the time you get Thumbelina, but there's also uh, Jack of the Beanstalk. Which, it took a while for us to finally find, and when we found it, we did cover it. But I like the, I like the Thumbelina version because there's more to it, but I like the Jack and the Beanstalk because it's just fucking shorter. It makes the movie shorter. Yeah. It's like 10 or 15 minutes shorter, and it's like, okay, I would prefer to watch the shorter Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny, but whatever. Um, and we did, and we did Santa Claus, the Jack and the Beanstalk last year. Yeah. Uh, between the two, and like, this is kind of hard to say, but I think Thumbelina is the superior film. Yeah, it seems like there's just more to that one. But the Jack by and superior, the... we mean sort of in Trump is Jack and the Beanstalk, Biden is Thumbelina. Thumbelina seems like a bad movie, whereas Jack and the Beanstalk feels like a shitty play someone filmed. Yeah. So there's that. So, yeah, so you're watching Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny, and, oh, there's Santa. He's stuck on the beach in Florida for some reason. And then suddenly, uh, a different and much longer movie breaks out. Which is fucking weird. It's a bad movie section. Yes. So, and then, when you're watching the movie within a movie... It starts off with um, the character of Thumbelina visiting a pirate theme park in Florida post-Disney bastardization. Uh, Thumbelina is set in Pirate Land Amusement Park for no reason whatsoever. So it's kind of like a movie within a movie within a movie. Yes. Because... Yeah. Here's Santa, and Santa tells a story, which is the movie of Thumbelina, but in that movie, the character visits a theme park, which isn't the story of Thumbelina. So while the character visits the theme park, she has told the story of Thumbelina. So this is the story of Thumbelina told to Thumbelina in a movie inside of a movie about Santa. Yes. It's confusing. It's basically crapception. Um, this is a 1972. Well, Santa is basically the wraparound. Yes, Santa the wraparound. Santa is basically the Debbie Harry of this movie. Yeah. Yes. So, so this is a 1972 kids movie. It's important to note that throughout the 60s and 70s, and some would say even the 80s, the powers that be in Hollyweird seem to. Th- 
seem to all think that like, oh, let's make a movie. Let's work really hard to make this a good movie, a gritty movie, a serious movie. Oh, wait, this is a movie for kids. Fuck it. Uh, let's make it as dumb as possible. Remember, people, kids are stupid. Yeah. So, like, that's how you get Santa Claus Conquers the Martians, uh, fucking Mac and me, you know. So, you know, this this is... It, it, the Kids' movies were movies that were quickly cranked out to make a little bit of money. Yes. Like that Mexican Santa Claus movie. Yes. I like that one. I like that one. Now, in order to fully get to the bottom of Santa Claus the Ice Cream Bunny, we need to talk about a specific movie genre. What? Are you going to talk about kids' movies? No! Nudie Cuties! Yes. The Pope on film! Kicking it up a notch! Okay, so Nudie Cuties were softcore nude movies from primarily the 50s and 60s. It featured ample toplessness, but select bottomness. No vagina, no uh, 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 penises. Usually some of the broad... And also, usually, some of the broadest humor ever to be shamelessly written into a script. Humor so broad that it made Benny Hill look like Shakespeare. Yes. So uh, I've got a list of some of the classic, some of the, the more famous uh, nudie cutie movies that have been created. And um, did I make up some of them? Yes. But I didn't make up too many of them, so maybe just get off my dick. So here's... Some of the most classic nudie cutie movies. Nudies on the Moon, The Monster of Camp Sunshine, Nudies at the Abattoir, Naked Homicide Detectives, Nudie University, Nakedsville, USA, Naked Welders. Uh, okay, never mind. I made up the majority of that list, but still, you get the general idea. Yes. You know? So nudie cuties were a thing. You know, the type of thing that was viewed in a dimly lit grindhouse theater by a single man in a long trench coat. But now, now while we are on the subject of nudie cuties, I do need to take a little bit of a side to try to solve my Wood Wayne dilemma. Yes. Because I really feel like the Wood Wayne special should be the last Ed Wood film. Yes. Ever? But his last... And I woke up early the day I died as our canonized last Ed Wood film. Yes. But his last two movies were porn. you got to go three movies back to get to take it out and trade, which is still... Well, it's a nudie cutie, but it's it's yeah. softcore porn, and I'm not so sure about streaming that. And, the, and how far back do we have to go to get to an Ed Wood movie to be his last movie while not being his last movie? I think you can go with any of the Ed Wood movies as long as there's no nudity. I don't think it has to be his last film, but a film. Yeah, I'd be okay with the Violent Years. That's a good one. He didn't di direct it, but he wrote the script for it. And I, I, in, t in, in typical Hollywood fashion, The Violent Years ended up being a massive financial success, but he was paid just $200 for the script. Hooray for Hollywood! Like, that's a good one. I'd go with that. Or Bride of the Monster, you know, like one of the classics. Yeah. Bride of the Monster might be a nice choice. Yeah. Okay, so nudie cuties were a thing, and uh, you, you might be wondering why we're having this nudie cutie detour when we're supposed to be talking about Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny, but don't worry about it, we'll get there. Um, one of the leading directors in the world of nudie cuties was a guy by the name of Barry Mahon. I'm, I'm pretty sure that the H is silent, and his actual name is Barry Mann, but I believe that all letters matter? Yes. 
you know, so some people say, oh, only vowels, oh, vowels matter. But I'm like, oh, all letters matter. So I pronounce all of the silent letters because I feel that no letters should be silent. Not the first time guess, you've come out as alphabetist. Yeah, I, I guess uh, I'm just a bit more woke than most people. Yeah. So his name is probably sp- pronounced Barry Mann, but... Around these parts, his name is Barry Mahon. Uh, he was a veteran. He was in World War II. I know this because I looked him up on Wikipedia, and apparently when he was in World War II, and this is true, he, he fighting people, hey, help me sock old Adolf in the jaw. And he was captured, and he tried to escape, and he was a small-time hero, and they made a little film about him. Uh, it's kind of an indie film. Not a lot of people have heard about it. It's called The Great Freaking Escape! It's based on the man who would later go on to make Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny. Yes. That's Makes crazy. That, that is a great Very... twist of fate. It's... Yeah, it's insane. It fucking God damn. So a Barry the only way Mahon could not set up just a little bit higher is if he would cast Audie Murphy. Yeah. 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 I'm a big uh Lee Van Cleef fan. So basically really. we are talking about Steve McQueen. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Barry Mahon was Steve McQueen. Damn it, I Made, dropped my grand. Went on to make nudie cuties. Wow. Yeah. Eventually leading to the summit, I guess, of his career, Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny. Yeah, Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny. Without a doubt, the apex of his I'm career. Sorry, I'm making the camera move. I have to it's fine. It's I fine. Turn I'm moving it a bunch now. Mm, earthquake! Okay, we good. I shook it a bunch to make you feel better. I'm not saying I'm a hero, because what's a hero? But um, Barry Mahon would direct over 60 films in his lifetime, and he was really prolific. Uh, he was also a prolific producer in junk. Um, here are some of his... Here's a list of... The, some of the nudie cuties that Barry Mahon directed. And unlike the last list, each one of these is an actual film that he directed. Forbidden, f- Forbidden Flesh, Sex Club Intern, Nude A Go-Go, Swinging Nurses, The Love Cult, Nudes on Tiger Reef, The Beast That Kills Women, Bottoms Up, and my favorite sounding one, the Diary of Knockers Macala. <laughs> great name. That's a great name. <laughs> Fucking wonderful. <coughs> I see my hair right now in the picture, and I feel like I look like if Buffalo Bill from Silence of the Lambs came out as bi. <laughs> I'd fuck me. That's how I feel I look right now. That's my aesthetic. Um, well, would you fuck you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Barry... We would have to set that up as its own stream, though. Yeah. It would have to I be a, 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 an event kind of a thing. Yeah. Uh... He was, but to be clear, Barry Mahon was also a good non-nudie cutie director. He didn't just make nudie cuties. He also made such classic stinkers as Pagan Island, Cuban Rebel Girls, and Rocket Attack USA, which was in season two of Mystery Science Theater. It was a Joel episode. So all the Joel ones are really good. He directed that. Okay, so this is how the story goes. In the late 60s in Dania, Florida, or Dania, Florida, uh, let's just call it Danielle, Florida. In Danielle, Florida, 
Uh, they opened up a 78-acre theme park called Pirate's World. Apparently, it was a big deal uh, for a very small amount of time. So it was a really big deal for a very small blip in the history books. I have lost my place. Uh, there it is. It, it was primarily known for the fact that it was a theme park, but they also had like a outdoor auditorium. And fucking Zeppelin played there in 69. The Grateful Dead played there in 70. David Bowie played there in 1972. They did good money until the 70s when uh, Walt Disney was like, I've got a great idea. This has never been done before. And I am amazing. I'm releasing a theme park in Florida. And most of America is like, oh, my God, another theme park? But in Florida? No one's ever done that before. Yay for Walt Disney. And uh, the makers of Pirates World are like, uh, excuse me, we're right fucking here. And once they start, once they announced uh, construction on Walt Disney World, suddenly uh, Pirates World doesn't seem that freaking great. So now Pirates World is struggling, and the owners are desperate to try and bring people to the park. So someone had the crazy-ass idea to make a series of fairly cheap movies, kids' movies, in and around the park, and the movies will serve as a sort of advertisement for their failing theme park. And as it just so happens, around this time, Mr. Uh, Nudie Cutie Barry Mann, Barry Mahon, was uh, thinking about jumping into the, the, the kitty movie picture. He, so he made a very low-budget Wizard of Oz movie, and he needed a place to film the Wizard of Oz movie, and uh, Pirate's World said, hey, come on in, you can film the movie in our theme park. And uh, it, so he filmed the Wizard of Oz movie in Pirate's World, but they hadn't gone into business yet. At that, this point, he was on his own, and he was just looking for a place to film. And he's doing a low-budget kids movie, and he, fucking Barry Mahon has the balls to go, yes, uh, my movie, it's not cheap and stupid. In fact, we got somebody big to star in it. Maybe you've heard of her. Judy Garland? Name ring a bell? But of course she's not in it. He was just fucking. He was just fucking lying in order to get uh, people to care about his shitty ass movies. So like, like it's total bullshit. But hey, uh, good on you. That's fucking hilarious. Uh, anyway, uh, after the Oz movie, Barry Mahon made a series of movies with Pirates World at his center. First, he did a documentary. It was called Musical Mutiny. It was about a big free Iron Butterfly concert. Yes. And then there was Jack and the Beanstalk. And then there was Thumbelina. All those two were made by Barry Mahon, but it, it, and he made those in the '70s. But then in 1971, Disney World opens, and Pirates World declared bankruptcy a few years later in 1973. But they went for one more kids movie. But they had no money because they were about to go out of business. So what they did is they. Silent Night, Deadly Night, toot it! Yeah. Boom! Just figure that out. So they just filmed a wraparound and used the other two movies that they had just done, uh, and that is the true story of the creation of Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny. Uh, well, I think, I think that we should take... Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny, either version, and cut out the Thumbelina parts and put in Silent Night, Deadly Night 2. So it could be Silent Night, Silent Night Deadly Night 3. I think it should be called Silent Night, Deadly Night 2. And the ice cream bunny. Mm -hmm. I like that title, and it's a really good idea. And I am getting really high right now. So I now it can't, it can't be Flash. So it's going to be a short movie 
Because you can't yeah. flash back to Silent Night, Deadly Night. You can only flash back to Silent Night, Deadly Night 2. Yeah. That's a great idea. Um, we did this episode... We, we first did Santa and the Ice Cream Bunny in episode 105. Uh, the episode before... We were discussing the end of Gilmore Girls and we we're trying to figure out who could be Rory's baby daddy. Ah. Oh. And I tried to make the case that Supernatural, the show, is a spin off of Gilmore Girls. And that they were both taking place mm -hmm. in the same universe. Yeah. Um,. We were also still doing homework. We watched Batman the serial and uh, the like movie serial. Yes. And uh, fun fact: the week after this, we did. You remember this? All American Christmas Carol. All American Christmas Carol. That hurt. Yeah. That hurt. It was yeah, a trailer was trash Christmas Carol. Yeah. And oh man, is she ever gonna be able to open her the the hairdressing studio she wants? Oh man, I remember something along those lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, that's all I've got. I think it's a really interesting story, you know. Um, I think we need to push for the sequel, Great Escape Two. What did okay. happen to this man after the war? I think America should know. So you, you make a great escape, too, and it's Steve McQueen making nudie cuties and ends with the, with the filming of Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny. I'm having a hard and time with this. And what we do, here's the genius part, okay? Because we're talking about a continuation of the great escape. Leonardo DiCaprio. Yes! Rick Dalton stars in The Great Escape 2, Santa Claus and the Ice Cream Bunny. Because we have footage oh. of him from The Great Escape. Yeah. That's a great idea. And if uh, Leonardo DiCaprio doesn't want to do it, we can just put him in. They brought Harold Ramis back from the dead. Yeah. So we can get Leonardo DiCaprio to be in our movie, whether he wants to or not. It's called Deep Fake, and it's a thing. Yeah. Uh, I am really high right now, and that's okay. exciting. We're not doing an episode for, for the next two weeks. Yes. When we come back, we are doing a movie. I don't know what yet. I'm not sure if I want to go something good or something really painful. I've got a lot of really painful movies. Well, it's the Academy season, so why not uh, both? <laughs> it, it, if you're talking about both, then I'm not saying we're doing it, but in our next episode... We might do Mother. I've been wanting to do that for a while. The, the Greg Danzig song? No. <laughs> Glenn Danzig. Greg Danzig Greg. makes me think of like Glenn Danzig's jock brother. <laughs> hey, I'm Greg Danzig. I'm the star of the football team. I'm always making fun of my younger brother, Glenn. He's such a dweeb. That's what I think of <laughs> Glenn Danzig. <laughs> Shut up, Glenn. You're always being mean to me. I'm going to go sing a song about mom. That's the Danzig brothers. <laughs> uh, you know who we get to start? Glenn Danzig? Joey Lawrence. Yeah. Always available. Yes. Boom. Yes. 
Uh, no, Mother is the movie starring Jennifer Lawrence when she was dating that that hoity-toity director still. Yeah. And they make this horrible Bible analogy movie where Jennifer Lawrence plays Mother Earth, but they never say that. And, like, religion happens around her, but it's just her inside of her house. But it's also the Bible, but also it all sucks. Okay. I've been wanting to do it for the podcast for a really long time. And our next episode might be it. But I'm going to I'm not announcing what our next movie is because I want to take the two weeks that we're off to figure out what we're doing. Maybe a poll. I need a lot of time. I need a lot of time to think about this. Maybe a maybe a poll. Just tossing that out there. Maybe a poll. Okay. I'll come up with a few movies and I'll put a poll up. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Yeah, I really like that. That's what we'll do. Yeah, so that's all I've got this week. That's about it for me. Yeah, and again, do me a favor. Don't go listen to episode 105, 154, 198, 241, or episode 285. And just take my word. That, uh... Okay. Haha, just take my word for it. Uh, this discussion of Santa Claus and the ice cream bunny, you've never heard it before. Dog and the squeaky toy. Stop with the squeaky. Stop with the squeaky. <laughs> yeah, so that's all I've got. Uh, oh, but, but hey, now that I'm thinking about this episode, Sorry. looking back. Uh, Joseph Mengele 2.0, the uh, Red Erections, Nightmare Alley, uh, Recep Eva Deek 5. I gotta say, I think this has been a good episode. I think it's been a good episode. It has been a damn good episode. Oh, okay. I also felt... I that it was a damn good episode, but I didn't want to say it because I feel like you're the person who gives an episode the distinction the distinction of damn, <laughs> and I didn't want to step on your toes, get you upset, you know, make you start molting like the bird over here, yeah, in the picture. But yes, I agree. I concur with your assessment, <laughs> good sir. And I just want to give a shout out to everybody who's come by the chat and hung out and watched Woo-hoo. the show. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve. And uh, what do I say at the end? I'm pretty high right now. On behalf of Max and Natasha and Eleanor and the dog's squeaky toy and some random explosion that happens somewhere, I just would like to say uh, from all of us here at the Pope on Film and Undead Cow Studios, I just want to say thanks for listening. And we will see you next week. No. We will see you next week, you godless heathens. How many seconds do I have? And you do swap with your booty that. And you forks. And you mummies. Do 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 do